Now trial was a labor of love and investigator initiated study where we had the opportunity to explore if the use of single agent PARP inhibition, specifically Olaparib, for only two cycles, so just two 28 day cycles, would allow us to move directly to surgery with no intervening chemotherapy in patients with um, BRCA mutant advanced stage ovarian cancer. And excitingly, it worked. So we, were, we only enrolled 15 patients. It was a feasibility study meant to understand if this was going to be potentially safe and effective. And what we found is that 88% of patients could move directly to surgery after only two cycles of therapy. And excitingly, 73% had more than a 75% reduction in their CA125, one of our biomarkers for understanding. So we could see that there's clearly activity in this patient population. And importantly, there wasn't much toxicity. The toxicity was as expected, um, with only one patient requiring a dose hold and a dose reduction for a grade three anemia. So it's tolerable. And that obviously is important because if we're moving to potentially exchange chemotherapy for a targeted therapy, we don't want to add additional toxicity. We want to be providing better quality of life. Now, we did look at quality of life, but that's going to be looked at in a, in a future meeting, well, hopefully a future SGO. During our discussion today with the trial, Dr. Moore brought up a great point of really trying to understand what earlier PARP might do for later benefit from therapy or later response to therapy. And, and she brought up a point which I think we've all been struggling with is, should we chemically debulk these patients with chemotherapy first before transitioning to PARP? So would PARP better be um, uh, scheduled after adjuvant therapy, so after surgery and then randomized? So I think there's a lot we don't know. And luckily, for as part of our NOW trial, we did um, get biopsies at baseline as well as at the time of tumor reductive surgery to be able to tease out some biomarker data to understand who benefits the most, what pathways are upregulated and downregulated in response to this therapy, what mechanisms of resistance might be arising. And so that will help us inform future trials.